Uh, hey guys, so I realized while recording, I do not feel like my normal high energy self, or at least I don't to me. Uh, that is for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, state of the world. Two, this movie is just so bad that I didn't feel like putting the time or effort into making my like normal high energy over acting self. So, <laughs> yeah, just keep that in mind. Also, spoilers. Massive spoilers in this. But you're not going to watch the movie, so it doesn't matter. Alright, uh, anyway, hope you guys enjoy the video. So, here it is. Hello, and welcome back to another uh, critical review of mine. This time on the movie Lockout. So, to begin with, Lockout is a sci-fi movie taking place in 2079, I believe. Where, basically, at this time, uh, Supermax criminals, I guess, are being held in stasis on a space station because apparently reasons yeah th that that was not explained at all like it is not explained why we're holding them in stasis in space because they're in stasis so why do they need to be in space they're in stasis they shouldn't why i don't know that's not explained at all but like okay so, the main character of this movie, uh, Snow. Snow is like the stereotypical, I don't give a shit action hero that was popularized in the 90s for whatever reason. But in a movie where they try to play off of that in a comedic style? I don't know. It's very hard to explain what the fuck Snow is because the movie seemingly doesn't know. But the movie basically starts off with a fight scene of him, like, you know, doing his thing. And then, like, he gets arrested. No, before he gets arrested, well, he's running away because they're attacking him because they think he did something that he didn't actually do. Like, okay. It, sorry. It's it's very, very weird and annoying, and I, I did not like watching this movie at all. The movie goes from... Decently choreographed fight scene to a PS2 graphic. I'm not kidding. It suddenly is like 200 miles an hour while he's on a motorcycle shooting cars that are chasing him and things are blowing up on the street. The, the only lead in to this that we get is him seeing the motorcycle and then it just cuts to that. Okay, I don't understand why we're using a PS2 graphic, but... Anyway, after the PS2 graphic, he crashes almost, he almost dies, but barely stops because cliche, um, and then gets arrested because they, they apparently believe that he's selling state secrets or something, or they thought the guy that he supposedly killed was selling state It is not explained why he is arrested outside of they think he shot someone who was supposedly selling state secrets, which... If the guy was selling state secrets, wouldn't the government want him dead and stopped to begin with? Yeah, again, it's not explained why he was arrested outside of he they think he killed the guy. Oh, and by the way, this guy that he supposedly killed, uh, they think he killed him because they have one angle of video footage that makes it look like he shot him. One. I'm sorry, you're telling me that this is a world where we have single-wheeled motorcycles that can go 200 miles an hour with cars that can explode because I shot someone in the face through the windshield that has drones and, and puts people in stasis and apparently has some sort of life-detecting system in the entirety of the first family doesn't have more than one video camera to do surveillance on this guy with. What? The level of mental acrobatics that they had to go through to be like, nah, he doesn't have any, no, not at all, no, no surveillance other than this one angle that was caught through a freaking binocular, which by the way, that is exactly how he, the guy saw it, through fucking binoculars, somehow got Good camera video quality to see him is the whole reason. Holy shit. No, no, that is not how this works. Not at all. 
Uh, but anyway, the movie then cuts to the first daughter. Uh, she is in the station basically trying to figure out if the stasis thing is a good or a bad thing uh, so they can, you know, do policies based on that because reasons. And then, you know, bad things happen because they let out a crazy person who stole a gun and, you know, hostaged the entirety of the station and then let everyone out and then tried to rape the first daughter. Like, that that was a scene. Like, you could tell where it was going. And then his brother stops him, which I was grateful for. So after that, they get Snow to agree to go to the ship so he can avoid prison time. Which, by the way, he has been convicted to, like, 30 years with no hope of parole because they think he shot someone. No trial, no nothing. I don't care that it's straight up in our constitution as something you are guaranteed. Oh boy. God, I hate this movie. I hate this movie so much. Holy crap. But then from there, it's standard. It goes to the spaceship, saves the daughter. They're gonna blow everything up. He saves everyone somehow. It is the most con oh no, he doesn't save everyone. Everyone else dies. They shoot all of their hostages because one guy is bloody insane. And yes, I'm gonna use bloody because the dude has a fucking accent the entire fucking film. I'm pretty sure it's Irish. It's Irish or Scottish, it's one of the two. The dude has an accent the entire time. It's not the worst accent I've heard either, but it made no sense because apparently this is an American prison. And I apologize if that wasn't the best accent in the world. I'm working on my accents, but you know. But I'm keeping that in. Yeah. But like, this guy shoots everyone for no reason other than he wants to draw out the president's daughter after he finds out she's the president's daughter, despite the fact that more hostages is a better thing than less, dumbass. The stupidity of the criminals in this movie. They get out and survive, because of course they do, though they jump from space, and as they're coming down, parachute, they, they open the chute like maybe 500 feet above the ground, and somehow land softly and don't break all of their bones on the fucking street that they land on. The, the first daughter does the thing and finds out, like, gets the fucking case and the information and all that. And then it's revealed that the person actually tried to steal state secrets is the one who was, like, convinced everyone to help the guy. And then the movie just ends very cliched. I, thank fucking God. I, I'm, I'm happy that the movie did one good thing, and that was... The two arguing characters that seemingly hated each other, Snow and the first daughter, it's implied that they're going to fuck after the film, but they don't kiss. She punches him in the face as payback for what he did to her on the ship, which, thank you for once, is one of my biggest pet peeves when characters do nothing but argue the entire time and then they just are suddenly boyfriend and girlfriend at the end of the film. It bothers me in like all media. If it happens in a show, in a book, in anything, it pisses me off because it is stupid. I have opinions here. That was the one good part of the movie. And it's just, it feels like it was supposed to be made in the 90s, but they didn't think they had the budget, so they pushed it off 10 years. It's really bad. It's not even like those old 90s movies you can just laugh at the cliches and how stupid some of the stuff is. It's just... Bad. The number of times I like questioned every motive the characters had because it made no sense. I mean, oh my god. Th that's the thing. I can't really say much. The movie's just really bad. It, the set design looked amazing. I'm a massive. I love sci fi and fantasy. And so if you get an amazing looking set, I will love you. Like the movie Pan from 2015. 15? Yeah. 2015's Pan, the uh, Peter Pan sequel. Neverland looks gorgeous. Like, the set and everything looks amazing, and I thought that was brilliant, but the movie's really bad. Lockout is a very similar way. The set looks pretty damn cool, all the props look awesome, but the movie is bland as all hell and just boring it makes no sense and oh my god it was such a slog to sit through seriously it's like an hour and a half long i remember like looking up seeing like eight o'clock and my 
first thought was, holy crap, it's only been an hour? It's so boring and it just drags. It, oh my god, don't watch this movie. If you want a fun, dumb action movie, there are plenty better ones out there. But just don't, please, do me a favor, don't watch this movie. If you can avoid it, never watch this film. For me, this movie rolls a four. Like, this movie failed that check to make me enjoy it. By and large. Super cliched plot. Feels like it came out in, it should have come out in the 90s, which it didn't. I remember this, because I remember seeing commercials being like, that looks awesome, I want to see it. With just cliched plots, cliched characters, boring dialogue, pretty looking set, but that's pretty much all the movie has going for it. So, even if you're bored, there are better action movies to watch, it's better sci-fi movies to watch, Minority Reports on Netflix, watch that. Yeah, just overall not enjoyable movie at all. Seriously, I think that's the lowest of, I don't think I've ever given, no, no, I don't think I've ever gotten to a natural one. This came close, but the pretty looking set and the fact that the characters didn't end up together immediately at the end of the film, I liked that, so it gave it a little bit back, so a four, but yeah. That's all I have for now, guys. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter or Instagram, links to both of those are going to be in the description down below, as always. If you'd like to watch more of these reviews, a uh, playlist is going to be linked right there. Uh, if you would like to see another video of mine, whatever that is, going to be linked right there. And, yeah, I hope that you guys have a great day, and as always, peace out.